Hi folks, we had a problem with the underside of our modular vice system. We fixed it by taking this toolpath and switching it to that. Anybody notice the difference? The difference is the transition smoothing move as the 2D contour changes direction. Let's show how we do that and let's talk about big picture, how CAM can really help get the most out of your machine and help you produce just phenomenal parts. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So this one stumped me at first. It's the underside of our modular vice system. We're really trying to emphasize on just phenomenal tolerances and just the quality of the product that we put out. So we've got an adaptive, we're roughing it out, that's pretty standard. We're using a horizontal only for the top. We're not using a horizontal for this face here because I actually have a very particular look I want. And if we look at the horizontal toolpath that would have happened, I just don't like it. Uh, it's, it may be an efficient or maybe an appropriate way to remove material, but this is where I like taking cam and turning it into kind of an art form and controlling what you want to get. So 2D contour does give us the finish that we want and the look that we want with one exception. We were getting these little circular rings right here, and we're machining these on the Haas VF2, but any machine is potentially susceptible to this because it's physics. What's happening is the machine is moving along this path, and then whether or not it comes to a complete stop or not, it has to completely reverse direction. So in this case, the Y and the X axis servos, as well as the lead screws, and then the machine has some amount of movement. It just does. You'll see it less with machines that weigh more. An 80,000 pound machine may do this less than a 5,000 pound machine, but the point is not to combat that problem with cast iron and rigidity. It's let's make a better tool path. So it took me a minute to figure it out, and I'm excited for the answer, not only because I figured it out, but because it's, I think, symbolic of why I love Fusion. So I was playing around with minimum cutting radius, smoothing deviation, and smoothing itself down here, and none of them were doing it. And one of the reasons I couldn't figure it out was I don't do this a lot. I don't use roughing passes in 2D contour very often because normally I'm using 2D contour just to clean up something particular like this pin. So what this answer is smoothing deviation within this roughing passes section. So you can see here, we've got it set on this one to four ten thousandths of an inch. If we take a look at the other example, I've up increased it to 10,000, so almost a 20 fold increase in that smoothing deviation. And the difference is subtle, but it means all the world. Now the machine is able to do a more smooth linking move as the machine is able to transition through that corner instead of thinking about it in your vehicle, coming to a complete stop, cranking the wheel all the way to the right, and then stepping on the gas again. Let the machine do a really smooth move. That's one reason why when we do our linking moves to enter the part, you'll notice we don't do sharp 90s. We come in, we do a vertical radius, we come over, and then we do a horizontal radius. Let the machine move in a very fluid manner. The other reason I was excited about this was that I actually couldn't figure it out. So I went online and that's what's awesome to me about why I love Fusion is there's this community of people who are very capable, very knowledgeable, and generally pretty darn willing to help out and share and pay it forward. Two of the best places to get help Take a look at the Fusion 360 forums, very active and engaged audience that's generally pretty willing to help out and help you solve your problem or a great repository of existing information that you can look through. The other, I am hugely biased here, is our new NYC CNC site. If you click on Fusion 360, you can see all the different topics of videos that we've got covering all sorts of situations, whether it's sheet metal or post-processor editing or fourth axis cam or Head over to our library where you're able to use either the search or the filters to find whatever you need. And our goal for 2018 is to continue building out the information here for machinists and for manufacturing entrepreneurs. One last thing to show. There's a really cool trick to the 2D contour here that we're using that I want to make sure everybody knows about. If we take a look at this 2D contour, we selected these two circles as our contour selection. So I want to machine everything out from there. And under passes, I have roughing passes selected, my tool step over, and I have 15 step overs selected. So that's on the radius. So 15 times 0.25 is 3.75 inches in all directions. So when I click OK, this part toolpath is going to go way beyond the extents of the part. 
How did we turn that into this? Go back into your 2D contour, edit, geometry, check stock contours. There's three different things you can do here to pick. Right now, it's gonna to default to the stock that was defined in our setup. In this case, video examples or you know the mod vice fixed jaw. So whatever our stock size is. Well, that stock's already gone by the time I get to this point. So I'm gonna override it by picking the outside profile of my part and click OK. That's the second option. The third option is you can use 2D sketches that you created in the CAD or model environment to control exactly where you want this to go. And what this lets you do is use 2D contour, which is traditionally a finishing strategy, and it lets you use it as either a roughing strategy or as kind of a face finishing strategy in certain containment zones. Really cool way, again, to let you control the toolpath you want, whether it's for surface finishes, whether it's for a visual or aesthetic use, or whether you're just trying to avoid a fixture or something else of the sorts. Folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.